Hey everybody, so we are going to work through our practice quiz here. Uh, basically getting different, I think I changed up these the names a little bit here. Let me just make sure these are all correct. Cut them all, gets. All right, so yeah, just going to work our way through here. Um, the first three are designed to be straightforward. I mean, they're all like, hopefully pretty straightforward, nothing too complex. Uh, but these ones will be just a little bit stepped up from the first three. All right, so the first one we're going to do the get age method. All right, so here we go. We're going to I'm going to go near. We just need to get age. So we already have everything set up in here. Uh, I have data frame already collected from you. It's going to print the data here. We can just see. I think just to begin with, let's see like what is actually going to be in here. Um, so far, all these things are returning nothing, uh, and this is what we can see. This is our data frame to begin with. You'll notice that I use the first index, the uh, first column to be the indexes for the each row. So that's why I have like Alice, Bob, Carol, Dave, Eve are all of the the names of the rows. Okay, so let's go into, uh, we'll just work our way through these. So for get age, we need to go into DF. Uh, this is just accessing the, the age column. So we're just going to say something like this, and we need to make sure that we're returning it. These are all individual methods because it just makes it easier to do testing on this. Uh, we should have a, a working test in here, hopefully. So let's see, we're going to return that. Um, next up, we need to get the third name. So if we look back at that document, let's see, let's go into here. Um, get the third name. So we should return the third person on the list of so the third row, no matter what. So even if I like mix up the rows, it should always be getting the third person. So you can't just access Carol's information. You want to access the third person's. Uh, and really what this is trying to get out of you is that you need to use iLook on this one because you need to be accessing the, based on the kind of built-in uh, indexing, not the name. So we should say in here just two. Uh, so that'll get row two. And then, um, yeah, let's run those two. We should see here. So this is getting out the age information. Um, this is going to be a series type object. That's why you can see this like extra information down at the bottom. This is saying like what is the name of the series object and then what type of data do we have stored in here. That's why it's a slightly different format from here. And you can see see in the same way when we get an individual row out, an individual row or an individual column is a series. So in here, these are the indexes still. This is the information. Name is Carol, and it's an object because we're we're keeping. Yeah, multiple types of information about in about Carol in there. Um, also, we're gonna get the same thing for this one. So we're gonna find the employee named Carol. So this is gonna return the same thing. Uh, we're gonna say loc in this oh, return def loc. In this case, we're gonna say we can just access Carol. So just the difference between using iloc and just regular loc. So the regular loc is going to use it based on whatever naming system you came up with. iloc is gonna go by the kind of the implicit, the kind of built in naming system, numbering system, which is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 for each row. So if we run this, we should see identical information here for these two. Because Carol, either way, we're really accessing Carol's information just in two different ways. All right, so now next thing up, this is going to kind of go back to, this is the kind of connected one to the, the first one. This is uh, get age. So in this case, we want to return more than one column. So actually, when we start returning more than one column, we're going to start getting into a data frame. Individual column, we're returning a series. Um, multiple columns, we're returning a data frame. So functionally, though, it really doesn't make any difference to you, uh, just to kind of be clear about that. It's like kind of roughly the same thing. In this one, we want to return a column, but we don't want to return a single column. We need to return, so this is going to be an example of fancy indexing. We want to return, uh, let's see, we want to return the ones where, let me say age and occupation, name and occupation. So we need to return name, comma, occupation okay and then if we run this let's see do we not get name as one of our let's look at what our columns are called oh name oh i should change this up a little bit um let's see because those are all in there i think i could return just get like index from there uh i'm just gonna change this up just for the sake of doing this so when you guys see this it will look different so I'm going to pause this for a second and update this a little bit. All right, just went, went through another there, updated the uh, relevant things. So yeah, so we're going to return salary and occupation for this one. When we run this one, we should get back. Uh, oh, because they didn't update this down here. Let's just delete that. Salary and occupation. And that's good. So we should see just the columns about this information. Um, so again, this is actually going to be a data frame. That's why there's no information below. Like you see here, we have name and the data type. Those uh, That will print out when we print a series object, not when we print a data frame. Uh, okay, what are we doing next? We are going to go in and we're going to get the 
age and salary of the first two. So basically what this is doing is we're getting the first two people on the list um, and we're only getting the age and the salary information about this. So again, this is going to require us to use, if we are accessing the first two people on the list, we're gonna use iLoc. And this one's kind of like similar to what we've done previously. Let's do return EF. Uh, we're gonna do iLoc. And then we're gonna say something comma something because we actually wanna get a slice out of this. Like we wanna get like a small section out of it. We don't just want like an entire row or an entire, entire column. We want like a row, but then only a couple pieces of information, a couple of the, the data from that column. So this is where we're gonna start doing uh, something comma something. So we're gonna say, if we wanna access, I think we said the third person uh, for the first two people. Okay, so we wanna have a list here. For the first two people, we're gonna do a slice here. We're gonna say from person zero, to up to, but not, in, well, so from index zero up to, but not including two. So these are gonna be our, the rows that we're trying to access. Uh, we were talking about this in class before, this would be kind of like our Y, because we're like, we're looking through the rows. Uh, but from the first, from the zeroth index up to the second, but not including the second. So that's gonna determine like which rows we're gonna select out of. If we just run this code like this, just to be clear, just maybe it's like a learning moment here. If we just run this, it is going to take Bob and Alice, the first two things on the list, and it's gonna get all their information. But it says in the prompt, we want to get the, just the age and the salary. So I need to add more information about kind of like what column should I be selecting? Because this is iLoc, we can't mix and match iLoc and loc. So we can't call, it'd be nice if we could just call age and salary, but we can't do that because they are kind of mixed up here. Um, because yeah, we can't, we can't mix and match iLoc and loc together in one thing. So what we need to do is just, what we say, what we say, what we say it was age and salary. So that's gonna be, the zero index and the two index. So in here, for the columns that I wanted to get, that I wanted to get out of this, having trouble talking, I want to get zero and two. So I'm going to do some fancy indexing here to only get me the zero column and the, well, the two column. Zero one, and two should be giving me age and salary. So if we run this, we should see here, right? We're slicing out the first two rows and then the first, and I guess really like the third columns. Right, first and third columns. So that's how we're doing that. We're doing, so what I love about this one is we're doing a mix of slicing to get like all the things between these two values. And then also we're getting a, uh, we're doing mixing and slicing and fancy indexing where we're saying also just get these two individual locations. Okay, um, let's see, could we do this in a different way? Let's see, I'm curious about this. I think we could mix and match iLoc and loc. Uh, as we said before, when we ran this, when we run this code, we should get out this whole data frame here so I think we could treat this like, we could do something like this, either do, we could do some stuff like this, say, okay, this is a data frame. It's kind of just those data frame with just those two rows. I could go into here and say, now get me age, give me the columns age, comma, salary. And that would actually get the same thing. So there's two different ways of doing that if you don't feel comfortable about using I don't know. I think this is kind of a little bit, it works, but not like the, I don't know, maybe it's good. Maybe it's good because you don't have to really keep track of like which columns you're dealing with. You have to like keep track of like what numbers they are. So maybe this is a good approach for it. Uh, one thing you'll notice I just want to point out here is that we have two sets of brackets. Hopefully you realize why, but uh, the outer set of brackets is saying retrieve for me a column. And then inside it's like, well, I want to get age and salary. I can't just say this. I can't just say this, this, well, I don't think this will work. Yeah, it's gonna give you some, some errors because it's like thinking these are two separate things. Like you want one thing and another thing, but we don't, it's like you're passing in two different things as arguments, but really I just wanna pass in one thing. I wanna pass in a list of rows, a list of columns that I wanna get. So boom, all right, so that'll work. That one will work, we'll go back to the original one too. Again, I mean, in both cases, we're passing in a list of values that we want because they're not like right next to each other. So I need to slice those out. All right, uh, coming up to the last one, let's see the get occupation for Bob and Eve method to return the occupation of Bob and Eve. Okay, so in this case, we are looking for names of both things. So this should key you up to say, well, I should use loc here, not iloc. Again, like I want to kind of narrow this down into a, you know, a small section out of my data frame. So I want to go in here and I want to say return uh, ef loc, and I'm going to say something comma something like what's what slice of this do I need to get or what like chunk of this I need to get I guess 
And I'm going to say in here, oh, uh, let's see, one name I should be getting in here is Bob. The other name I should be getting in here is Eve. Again, because they're not next to each other, I need to do like, I need to make a list of rows to, to take out. And then in here, I just need to say occupation. All right, let's run this. Hopefully this will all work. And boom, we get in here, Bob, Eve, doctor, manager. Okay. Uh, and again, this is going to, because it's just going to be a single, it'd be a single column of two values. Again, this is going to turn into a series, which is why we get this information at the bottom. Okay. Uh, hopefully it was in, in enough detail to explain kind of how this works. I think you could mess around and get any one of these values. I didn't do any masking on here, I realize, uh, but I think that's okay. Oh, let me, um, let me pause for a second and I'll, I think I should get these tests working. They should be working now. I think before I go too deep into this, I just want to show in here that you need to when we configure a test, we need to do unit test. It's just going to be in root directory, and then we just need to do test underscore, and it should pull up the appropriate stuff here. I'm going to run it. I don't think it's going to work. I think I have to go through and like fix some of these tests. We see at least one of them is working. Hopefully, give me a second, I'll get all these working. All right, so I'm going to work on getting these tests up and working. Everything there, come along. I'm working my way through them, getting them all up and working. By the time you get this, everything should be working. So I'll see you later.